here. I know this must be a really exciting um, event. It has been for me as well. I've met quite a few of you. Um, and I realize my slides don't actually touch on what Auth0 is, and a few of you don't know what it is either. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about that self, and then we'll get into the super exciting um, topic of security, which I know you're all very, very interested in. Um, but Auth0 is a developer tool which is built for developers who are building any type of application, B2C, B2B, um, to build a login screen. So once you have users, you want your users to be able to log in securely. We have a lot of different types of identity providers like Google. You can just go basic username, password. You can go more complicated like passkeys. Um, and so that's what Auth0 is as a tool, and you can integrate it into any tech stack. If you have any questions, we do have a booth, so you can check that out later. Now, to get into the exciting part of things, which is security considerations for AI applications. Um, my name is Shreya. I am the developer advocate for Auth0 for Startups, which is a program that is built to help early stage startups with implementing Auth0. Um, a lot of the founders that we work with are building B2B apps, but we also have folks building B2C and all types of other use cases that we're gonna talk about in a little second. And these are some of the founders that we work with in the companies as well. Um, and we provide Auth0 for free to these early stage startups so that they don't have to struggle for resources as they're trying to build and launch and scale their apps. Um, quick note, I'm gonna be mentioning some topics that are uh, associated with a feature that's going to be launched in the future, but it's not quite out just yet. Um, and so if I any say anything, please don't hold me legally liable for it. Um, not everything is set in stone. I don't wanna get sued just yet. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. So there's two perspectives that I wanna take a look at today. Um, one of them is what you do uh, when you're approaching using AI tools to build your own applications. So for example, generating code using AI tools like GitHub Copilot. And then the other side of things is AI agents, which are starting to become more, not just of a trendy topic, more of a useful day-to-day -day use case that a lot of developers are building. Um, so what are some of the security considerations you need to keep in mind when you're using AI in these very different ways? Um, so we'll start with the first one, which is using Gen AI applications to build any type of application. I work at a company called Okta. Auth0 is a product under that umbrella. And it's a very large company, which means that we have a lot of resources, legal teams, security teams, to make sure that when we're using AI tools, everyone at the company is doing it securely. Our customers are secure in the process as well. However, working with early stage startups, I've noticed that not everyone has access to those types of resources. So we've done a lot of research to try to see if we can bring all of these learnings that startup founders have, that folks in AI and security have at larger companies, um, and bring them down to other companies that don't necessarily have access to those types of resources. Um, so let's dive into the security risks and what you can do, like questions you can ask to start preventing those types of risks. The first area of risks that you want to be aware of is PI and copyright concerns. So this is really about protecting yourself, protecting your code base, protecting your engineers who are building um, your application using AI tools. For example, code ownership is a large piece of it. Um, I know many developers, if you've been using AI tools, you probably use it to auto-generate code. Um, a lot of folks at large corp corporations actually have contracts with companies like GitHub Copilot uh, to make sure that whatever code that's generated can be owned by them. But if you're using a free trial of these types of AI tools, you might not have that access. So being aware that the code that's generated is not necessarily owned by you is a big piece of it. Um, code du duplication is sort of along the same vein of it, um, is if that AI tool has been trained on someone else's code, are you potentially copying code from someone else and could you later down the line um, be held liable for using that other piece of code? Um, these are issues that companies have faced in the past and so if you're using AI to build any type of application you should keep in mind. And then when your competitors come into the mix, so if you're building similar products to your competitors and you happen to use code that they have also generated using these AI tools, are there any complications that could happen in the future, especially from the legal perspective? The second set of risks is over-reliance. So is your team 
Um, I don't know if you're familiar, there's this new concept of vibe coding, uh, which is basically just saying that a lot of engineers are using AI tools to go and just build full-on applications, generating the code, not really familiarizing themselves with it, not understanding what it does, um, but just constantly updating the code base until they have a full product um, that was basically AI generated, which is cool and it's fine and that's the exciting part of using AI. Um, however, when you're not familiar with that code itself, there's a lot of complications that can come further down the line. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Hallucinations is another piece, especially if you're actually building AI tools, which is kind of meta, using those AI tools. Um, but are you able to make sure that the, the product that you're building, especially if it's like an AI agent, isn't then providing hallucinations or false answers to the customers, to your users that are using these tools? Um, and then are you able to build in review processes to make sure that the code that you're building has been reviewed, but not necessarily in the same ways that it used to be years ago, but now what are some ways in which you can make sure that the code is actually line by line, word by word, um, something that you're familiar with. And then in terms of actually going about preventing things like data exposure, which is where your customers come in, making sure that their data is secure as well, um, do you have folks on your team that are monitoring the data that is being put into these AI tools? Um, do you have strategies to make sure that all of your customer data is being protected? And do you have any policies and tools implemented internally, which a lot of large corporations do have, um, to prevent misuse of these AI tools? Sorry, I'm saying tools a lot, I'm aware. Um, I can't think of another word right now. If you're curious about more of these potential risks, you can go check out OWASP's list of top 10 potential security risks. They've done a lot of research into this. I've listed out a few on the uh, screen up there. Um, they're also working on gathering more information and putting out a new list in 2025, but this is a great place to get started to protect yourselves. Now the other side of it is startups that are building AI agents. Now if you're building AI agents, what are certain things that you need to keep in mind to make sure that the product that you're building is secure for yourself and for your users? Um, there's various different use cases we can talk about. On the B2C side, you might be building uh, an AI agent that is managing your personal finances or buying concert tickets for you. Or on the B2B side, you might be building like an HR operations AI agent um, that needs access to a lot more personal information and documentation, or like a travel booking agency, something like that, but not an agency, an agent. Um, so what are the requirements that you need to keep in mind when you're building these types of agents? The first one is user authentication. So when this AI agent exists and it's talking to users, how does the AI agent know who the user is? How does it know that the user isn't someone else who they're saying they are? The other piece is calling APIs on the user's behalf. So now the beauty of AI agents is that they're able to go and perform tasks on behalf of the user. Um, so how do we do that in a secure way to make sure the AI agent is, isn't just going about and has the ability to autonomously do whatever it wants, but only has access to certain APIs and is able to complete certain tasks, but also that process shouldn't have to be super manual for users. The third piece is async user confirmation, which basically means that you want your AI agent to be able to do tasks on its own in its own time. So if it requires a lot more time or requires certain conditions to be met, how do you make sure that that AI agent is able to complete those tasks without needing a user to sit there in front of it? Um, and then the last piece, this is a little bit, sounds a bit dry, it's the document level access, which if you're familiar with RAG-based applications, a lot of these agents need access to certain documents that are specific to certain users. So how do you make sure that that agent isn't using sensitive information from documents that the user might not have access to. Um, so those are the four main requirements that at Auth0 we've identified and that we're trying to solve in the next coming months. We're working on a product suite called Auth for Gen AI. So if you're building an AI agent and some of these uh, requirements resonate with the work that you are doing, uh, you can head over to auth0.com slash AI, learn more about what these use cases are. There's a few demo apps you can try out as well. And if you join the waitlist, we're gonna give you early access to the product itself, which comes out in a few weeks. Um, 
And like I said earlier, we have a booth upstairs, so if you're building AI agents or any type of AI application and you're curious about how you can protect your users, you can come talk to our team and we can get you connected to the right folks. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day.